going to be showing you how to make your own Ethernet cables. Now this is a way cheaper alternative to buying pre-made cables. You can make them any length you want, and it's actually not that hard to do once you get the hang of it. So let's jump right into it. All right, I've got everything you need laid out here. A couple of these tools are optional, so I'll go through all of them, and I'll also leave a link on Amazon to everything I'm using here today down in the description below. Now first, of course, you'll need a box of Ethernet cable. I have CAT5e here today. Now I recommend using CAT6 or CAT6a these days if you're buying a new box since it's quite a bit faster and more future-proof, but I bought this box like 10 years ago and I still have quite a bit left, so it's what I'll be using today. You also want to make sure that you get solid copper cable and not copper clad aluminum or CCA. You might be drawn to the price of CCA cable since it's cheaper, but it's technically not compliant to the Ethernet specification and solid copper is much better quality for data transmission. I have Monoprice brand cable here, which is solid copper. You also want to stay away from anything labeled CAT7, CAT8, or higher, since those aren't real standards and you can't be sure of what you're actually getting. Next, you'll want to RJ45 connectors rated for whatever kind of cable you're using. So since I'm using CAT5e cable here, these are rated for CAT5e. These are not pass-through connectors, but you can follow this video regardless if you're using pass-through or non-pass-through connectors. I'll explain what you have to do for both. Actually, I know pass-through connectors are more common these days and easier to use, but again, I bought these a while ago and it's what I have, so it's what I'll be using. Now, these are optional, but I recommend them. They're strain relief boots for the ends of your cables. It just makes them a bit stronger and more resilient to pulling and bending at the connector. I have an RJ45 crimping tool to attach the RJ45 connectors to the wire. Now mine also has a blade for cutting wires, and I also have a pair of scissors, but if you don't have either of these, you should get a pair of wire cutters as well. And finally, I have a cable tester. Now this is optional, but I highly recommend it. It's not that expensive. This is just a basic one that tests electrical conductivity, not data transmission, but you can get more advanced ones that test data transmission as well. I normally just use this and then run a speed test on whatever device I'm using the cable on once I'm done to make sure that I'm getting the speeds I expect. All right, enough about the tools, let's get started on actually making the cable. 